to the channel another video another tutorial this time I will be working on my front forks uh, on the Africa twin um, I will show you step by step how to remove the forks and how to change the oil I will not be taking them apart I will be just doing the oil change as uh, I, I have installed uh, everything uh, new couple years ago so that's like not even two years ago i put a new cartridges hyper pro and uh, the oil and seals everything was done but uh, last two years i did uh, quite a bit of off-roading and i figure i'll do a oil change uh, change especially that uh, we know about the uh, wear that's happening on the inner tubes uh, i want to take the old oil out and put a new one so let's get into this video Before you start, uh, you want to release the pressure on your in your suspension uh, by turning counterclockwise uh, first the center screw, and I recommend just counting the turns, how many turns you had, so and and note it on a notepad or somewhere. This way you have it for a reference when you put it all back together. So I'm gonna start with the center screw here. three and three quarters on that one. And I will do the same thing on this side. So the same thing on the other screw. Next, you want to loosen up those uh, two 12 millimeter bolts that are on the cell holding the top uh, triple tree. So you want to just loosen them up. You might have to move your handlebars a bit because there's really tight, not much room, but it's doable. It's way worse to stick the, for the torque wrench after. Okay, I got that side loose. The same thing I'll do on the other side. I will not be moving the camera over because it's pretty straightforward. The reason why I'm doing this, uh, loosening the top part, so at this point, I will be able to spin the top caps uh, on the forks. And good thing to remember to, to uh, what kind of a spacing you had right here. So I know how my forks uh, were, were mounted here. Uh, if you're taking it out for the first time, make sure to check the exact spacing. You can even put a mark here with a marker if you want to. Uh, for me, they're sitting, uh, there are two mils, so one or two mils uh, uh, sitting up. You can bring them up a little bit higher, this way you can uh, lower the bike, the front of the bike uh, a little bit. So you can make a minor adjustments uh, to the height of your Africa Twin this way. The top caps are 24 mil socket. So I just want to do a couple turns here on both sides. So at this point, uh, I want to loosen up the other two uh, bolts. They're also 12 millimeters. They're just located in the lower triple tree clamps. So I'll do that on both sides now, and I should be able to take out the one of the legs. I'll do one at a time. Just hold it while you are undoing the bottom part because you don't want to drop your leg right on the bottom. And that comes out simply like this. So at this point, I want to pop out the seal here. But first I want to clean that crumb. All right, for, to do that, you just use a little screwdriver and go slowly all around. And that should come off. There we go. All 
Oh, the seals are really good because they're nice, nice and clean. So now, what I'm gonna do? I will unscrew the top part here. slowly drop it and then you pour out the oil so I'll do the same thing to the other side here. Always good idea to, to have a close look uh, to the forks if you have any stone chips or anything on it and uh, if, if so just get a really really fine sandpaper and polish it out because you don't want that definitely. Mines are looking actually quite good. Yeah, it's a good idea to put like a paper towel under the socket this way you don't scratch up the top of the cups here because they're anodized aluminum I forgot to do that on the previous one but might as well do that properly so not to cause any damage same thing when you're actually making any adjustments uh, when you're taking it out uh, on top uh, before you actually when you loosen the up uh, you should be using that uh, paper towel so this way you know the glass scratch it but I was quite gentle with that so so if you're doing it this way I would recommend let it sit for a, for quite some time at least an hour or so I, you know, I like to let it drain properly then I'll pump some more and uh, repeat that a uh, couple more times make sure all the oil is out of there all right guys so it's time to refill the forks right now uh, i have my old oil here um, right here i got a uh, thousand milliliters so it's just one liter and the rest uh, went on the rag because i had the inside the bucket i had a rag sitting so i protected the uh, bottom uh, of the forks and now uh, I will do the, I will refill them with the new oil. I am using, uh, in my case here, um, 10W medium mottled fork oil. And the original Hyper Pro oil, they're calling for 15. That's what I could get and probably that's not gonna make much of a difference. So just to be, uh, clarify, the original level of oil in a fork, uh, as per manufacture, is uh, that's uh, as for Honda manual it is uh, 721 milliliter milliliters with a 95 uh, millimeter gap uh, in a fork uh, so I will just fill into the level uh, of uh, specified requirement by Hyper Pro and in uh, Hyper Pro is calling for 700 milliliters uh, with 180 millimeter gap uh, of air. We'll start doing that first and I'll show you how to, how to do that. So I have measured here 700 uh, milliliters and I will simply pour it down. Slowly, you can bring that higher and hold it this way. You can tip the bucket over top there so to get every drop out of there. Yeah, and this way you can go over the top and make sure the oil is in there. Now you want to hold it to the top and pump it a little bit on a spring. Maybe let it sit for a little bit and pump it a little bit more just to get uh, most of the air from down the bottom to the top. 
pretty much close it up. To do that, the best thing, put it all the way to the top and spin it clockwise until it clicks. And then you can spin the top on or start with just a couple threads. Sorry, that's my right side. I'll take a clean paper towel and clean inside where the dust seal goes. Make sure we have no, no debris or nothing here. All right, same thing. Clean the dust, dust seal and slide it back up and close it up. It just should click in place. So you can pull the dust seals actually after major off-road. I do that sometimes as well. I will pull the dust seals and make sure I have no dirt or any debris stuck in there. Uh, that, uh, that will slightly extend the life of your seals. And as you saw before, I also use the shock socks. So that also helps a little bit, apparently. So uh, yeah, I didn't have a, uh, like I've, I've been quite a bit off-road and I don't have any damages here, nothing. Uh, the tubes are looking great and uh, so is the chrome part here because it protects pretty much the whole piece. So just gotta be sure when you're using the uh, shock socks, uh, take them off uh, after major off-roading because the mud and everything uh, it might still get in there and that will scratch your forks. Uh, you don't want that definitely. So just make sure to stay on top of it. It's worth a little time. Take those Velcros or if you have the with the tie wraps, um, uh, depends which kind of uh, sho shock socks you are using. So we're done here and uh, I'll get over to the other one. But uh, first I got to tighten up some more on the top screw here. I won't tighten it completely yet because I will do that once the fork is in place. Okay, so this is not torqued just as far as it goes here. Okay, the first fork is done and the second one will be the same story, but first I have to refill my bucket. Those are cheap buckets you can get at a Dollarama store or like a Dollar, dollar Tree, Dollar Store, whichever. They're plastic and uh, they're good to do the work uh, on your bike if you want to get the measurements. Okay, I got my second measurement here, another 700 milliliters. And uh, you might ask probably why uh, the difference is in uh, Hyper Pro versus your OEM uh, manual. Um, the main difference here, uh, um, my guess is that uh, the springs are a little bit longer because they're progressive, uh, plus 20 milliliters. So that has to compensate probably for the difference in oil. Uh, like I said, uh, 721 milliliters uh, on uh, stock Africa twin springs and they calling about I'm guessing it's about 700 mils uh, on uh, hyper pro and we'll do exactly the same thing just slowly pour it in there if you never did any service before on the forks I would recommend uh, following the manual and uh, take everything apart as they say but I did that so I know I have no issues there and uh, the suspension was not acting, acting up or nothing. Everything was fine until now, just the oil change. I'm not sure if there's any other methods. Uh, probably there might be another way of doing it because uh, people always come up with different ideas. I always wondered if I could drain the oil from the bottom. I never seen that before yet. So I'm looking at the oil about right. What I'm looking at probably I got, to, that's 180 millimeters, that's close to um, 20 centimeter gap and the oil is sitting right now here with the shock open because the lower you put the oil higher is gonna get higher so I'm pretty close to actually without even measuring I by the looks of it so now again we're gonna pump it a little bit so I'm not gonna measure that gap because uh, I actually ended up leaving the forks upside down for a whole night I, I started working this uh, last evening uh, when I started making this video and uh, I figured, eh, I got no, I'm not in any rush. So I let those forks sit overnight and uh, come in the morning back to it, uh, as you see, and continue. So this way I know that the oil completely drained out of there. Uh, so there's no chance that <laughs> there was any more oil uh, when they were sitting upside down all night. 
click right there. And now you can start doing a couple turns and start closing your cup on top. There's a little O-ring on there. Make sure it's uh, clean. If you can, change it. They're not expensive, but I changed it all as well last time. I was just looking at the O-rings and they're staying in a really good shape still. All right, so there we got, we got another fork. I'm gonna flip it over. All right, so at this point, uh, we are ready to uh, reassembly of everything. It's uh, pretty much the same, my, some same process as I took it out. Uh, basically, I will insert my fork, uh, the right, uh, left hand side, and adjust it at the top and clamp it with the middle um, of the triple tree here. And I will not touch the top yet until I fasten the, uh, until I torque the top caps on my forks. So let's do this now. All right, so the pinch boards, uh, they are they're supposed to be torqued to 18 uh, foot uh, pounds of torque. I only have that big torque wrench, so I have to deal with this one. Just make sure you tighten it just a little bit. 18 foot pounds, it's not really much, like I think. So the top uh, cups, they have to be torqued to 15 foot-pounds. So that's very little torque. Same thing on the other side. And back to 18 foot pounds for torque on the top pinch bolts here. I think it's time to invest into a smaller torque wrench. But they're so goddamn pricey. Got everything tightened up here to 18 foot pounds. And at this point, we are ready to start uh, reassemble the front wheel. I've got my axle cleaned up, ready for a new grease. I always grease everything, moving components, <laughs> let's put it that way. Especially when you're riding over water and all that stuff. So that grease keeps the water away from the internal components. Pinch, ball, pinch bolts are 22 foot pounds of torque. So now I'm gonna use a piece of wood just to push back on the calipers here. You don't wanna use any screwdrivers or nothing. And that's gonna be tightened to 33 foot pounds if I remember correctly. Let me double check the manual. It is 33 foot pounds of torque. 
while you're at it, clean up everything always. I'm pretty, pretty anal about it, but not everyone is. Once you have everything apart, might as well get into all those crevices and nicks that uh, normally you can't because of the fender in a way and all that stuff. I have a little bit of extra things here because of that rocks riser. And with this bolt here, that's an eight mil. Be gentle because it's, uh, you're going with the plastic here, so you don't want to cause any damage. So yeah, that thing doesn't have to be crazy tight. All right, so this is it. The job is completed. I put my shock socks back on. I didn't put the fender on because I will be taking the crash bars off and uh, I'll, I will be also doing a valve. I'm not sure if I will be filming that because that's a little bit of a tedious job and the camera is, uh, the filming is takes so much longer. I will see if I can do that or not. Um, that's, um, I have to concentrate on everything. Uh, it's gonna be a big job. So at this point, we're all done. And if that video was helpful to you in any way, hit the like button, always comment down below and subscribe to the channel for similar tutorials. And you will also find many more and uh, I, I have a plan to do more in the future as well. Also, you can check out uh, the playlists uh, with my adventures and uh, rides in Canada and US. Thank you for watching and until next time, cheers.